Hey guys, hope you're doing well. Uh, I am just taking a break between classes to shoot this. Uh, I only have a couple minutes. I'm not wearing my watch anymore. I only have a couple of minutes, but I figure it's good to kind of limit myself to like short periods of time. I'd like to make these a little more, I don't know, frequent and periodical as opposed to just kind of like letting out my feelings every like two weeks. For those of you who are new to this, this is a series I'm starting called Teaching in a Time of COVID-19. Yes, I know the references to love in the time of cholera are getting really, they were old like, three weeks ago, but here we are anyway. And the point of this is really to kind of document in video form kind of the extraordinary nature of what we as a species, um, as a planet are going through right now. Um, and to look at that perspective through that of a teacher, um, many of whom right now are teaching at home and kind of navigating the educational paradigm in ways that we've never had to before. Anyway, this is kind of week, the end of week three-ish of distance learning for our school. I think a lot of public schools are just starting this week, which to me is like, oh my goodness, how do you like get back into that rhythm after two weeks uh, of, of having your, of not having your kids? And I think for me at this point, I've kind of fallen into the rhythm of what I should be doing and what my new normal looks like. But I think more than just like teaching classes now, I think for me, looking at what occupies my days nowadays, it's more kind of like, okay, teaching is one of many really crazy and sad and distressing things that have changed about our world. And a lot of my life now I think has been more occupied with trying to navigate that, um, kind of distributing my energy in a way that I haven't had to really think about for a long time. Some of you might be familiar with uh, something called the spoons theory. Um, if you haven't, I'll link it in the description. Um, but basically it's this kind of way of framing uh, your energy or your kind of like your quota of energy per day for those who struggle with like mental health issues or with um, things of that nature. And where, where your abilities to kind of use your energy um, are limited in ways that you can't really control. And so that kind of analogy has been useful for me for a while now um, in the sense that I realize really cognizantly how how much effort, like every bit of effort that I spend towards doing something, whether it's something that I have to do or something I enjoy doing, it's energy that I have to like very carefully portion out. And so one thing I've noticed throughout the past couple of weeks is that the act of being in a mentally, emotionally distressing time, living through um, just a very turbulent and scary time in human history in itself requires a lot of energy, it requires spoons. Um, and you only have so many spoons in a day. And so when you're constantly spending spoons just by like being alive and um, you know paying attention to what's going on around, on around you, if only because you can't really help but paying atten pay attention because of so, how so many things have changed. And, um, just the sheer reality of like people getting sick and dying and people losing their jobs and you know it's it's come to the point where like I think living during this time it's no longer just an issue of like oh well we just have to stay at home and now the rhythms of our lives have just changed and we're dealing with boredom it feels a lot more like weighty now the the kind of like things that our world is dealing with and I think you know the there's so many layers to that right on the one hand it's like you know the fact that it is a pandemic and there are people dying and getting sick and loved ones dying and um, and and the the numbers of it, knowing that like statistically like we will all come out of this knowing someone who was deeply affected by this and, and to deal with that in impending grief. Um, I read a couple good articles about how like the funny way that we're feeling is really due to the fact that like we are grieving for what is to come something that has not yet happened yet um and then you look at like the things that are you know adjacent to this very core issue of a global pandemic and the things that are happening um that affect it or that are affected by it things like how is our government responding uh things like how are people being treated differently as a result of this um you know as an asian american that last question has affected me in a way that I really didn't expect to. I think living in a place that is relatively progressive, not necessarily diverse, but relatively like not super racist has been kind of, has, has allowed me the privilege of kind of theoreticizing a lot of the really awful things that could happen to people like me or people who look like me. Um, and that has changed. Um, not that I've encountered any of this personally, if only because like I have literally not left my house for almost four weeks now. And 
part of me is like, even after all this is over, I am, would be very, I think, hesitant to leave my house uh, just because of, yeah, stuff that has happened and that will probably continue to happen, um, you know, outside of just the, the magnitude and the severity of the de disease itself, like the social effects of it. Um, scary stuff and I think like the more you are forced to kind of think about these things the more that you can't really turn your face away from it because you know I mean I think I think there is yeah there is there's merit to like not spending your entire day kind of like soaked in news feeds and like you know watching I don't know press conferences all day long but like you know at the same time you know that you're living through history and you kind of feel this obligation this duty to pay attention um but it's just a lot to kind of like just the sheer act of living during this extraordinary extraordinarily distressing time and then also having to like do stuff to the point where like I feel myself running out of spoons before I can even begin doing the stuff that like I need to do, right? Like it's kind of like in the past you could kind of like wisely ration out your spoons, your energy towards the things that you need to do and now it's kind of like the sheer act of being alive is using spoons. I get like a really bad cough like every April. Um, this is due to, most likely I think it was like due to like um, when I was in Taiwan like six years ago during the summer I like contracted some sort of like respiratory something that like had me losing my voice for like a couple weeks and so beyond after that like every single year I've had like this really bad cough that always comes around during April um, and it's like a chest cough right and so like that chest cough came back like the week after we we like we started quarantining um, and so like usually it's just like a cough is a cough like it's gross it's flummy it's annoying um, I've gone to the doctor for it in previous years before and I know what it is but like even with that like I started getting also like physical anxiety symptoms which I've never had to deal with before um, and so, you know, on the one hand, I think if you're not kind of like, you know, if that's not something you're familiar with, as it wasn't for me, you kind of spend even more spoons worrying about that as well, like counting down, you know, the, you know, counting, looking at your calendar and counting down the number of like days of like, you know, looking how long the incubation period is for whatever. And so, um, and you look at more graphs just to kind of like feel like you need to supplement your data and your evidence. And like, so just to make yourself feel like you are at ease and when in fact it's just really contributing to your anxiety even more. But if you feel like if you don't, then it's just you're spending spoons either way, right? Um, and then to add on top of that, teaching. And so last time when we were talking, um, I talked a little bit about like how the classroom looks so different now and it seems like the uh, you know the joy of teaching a lot of that gets stolen from you because of this new format that we're in it just ends up being like okay here is you know material do it okay thanks bye um, but I'm also realizing that like do I actually have the energy to like do more than that right now um, if only because like the act of being alive feels so taxing you know what I mean um, if y'all have advice on how to conserve spoons or how you've been kind of rationing your energy um, throughout you know this this period of time I'd love to hear it yeah I mean like I think a lot of the things it's it, the reason why I feel the need to even bring this up is because like you know in times like this when you're you know there's so much going on in the world the, the one thing you want to do is kind of like find ways to distract yourself and I find like even things that like you know I want to do to distract myself that requires energy as well and by the time I get there by the time I finish all the things I have to do it's like I have no other energy than to just like lie down in bed and sleep um, and and there's no kind of like positive to outweigh the negative anymore and so anyway um this this is this is this does not have much of a point to it but like i just figured i'd check in with you guys i hope you guys are doing okay um one thing i wanted to bring to you guys attention is um there's been a petition or not really a petition just a statement that was drafted by a bunch of asian american christians regarding the anti-asian sentiment uh violent activity that's been happening in our country as well as a outside of our country um i won't talk too much about it here because i think the statement speaks for itself i signed it i hope you guys take a chance to read it over think it over carefully pray over it um you know continue praying for those of us who 
uh, for families like mine who um, for whom this is something that like despite the fact that we're not walking around outside it is something that we're considering thinking about often um, thinking about the the aftermath of all of this and how our world will change even after we're allowed to go outside um, scary times and so uh, if you're still led please take a look at that and sign it if you uh, feel moved anyway I hope you guys are doing okay um, hope to check in with you more often soon all right take care everyone bye-bye